Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 24th October 2023. Displayed here are the list of topics we are going to see today. As there is no newspaper for today's date, we are going to discuss the past two days newspaper. That is Monday's newspaper and Sunday's newspaper. Now let us get into the discussion. Look at this news article. It talks about TN Ket scheme. It means Tamil Nadu Kasanoi Yerapilla Titam or TB Death Free Project. The main objective of the scheme is to reduce mortality rate among the people with tuberculosis. Under the scheme, TB patients with high undernutrition or respiratory insufficiency are provided with high priority. TN government under this scheme has provided food baskets containing high protein food to many TB patients across the state. So this is all about the news article. In this context, let us see some points about TB and various steps taken by our government to curb tuberculosis. See, tuberculosis is a contagious infection caused by bacterium called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. It primarily affects the lungs, but in rare cases, it can also affect other parts of the body. It spreads through air when someone with TB coughs, sneezes or talks. So coming in close contact with someone who has active TB can put you at risk of TB. However, it is important to note that not everyone who is exposed to the bacteria becomes sick. People with a strong immune system can fight off the infection. On the other hand, people with a weakened immune system are more likely to become infected. Now coming to the symptoms of TB. Common symptoms include persistent coughing for more than 3 weeks, chest pain, coughing up blood, fatigue, weight loss, fever and night sweats. The above mentioned symptoms are common when mycobacterium tuberculosis infects the lungs. As a TB can also infect other parts of our body, there are other symptoms depending on the area affected. Is there a vaccine against TB? Yes, there is a vaccine called Basil Calmet Gurin, that is BCG vaccine. It is used in many countries with a high prevalence of TB to prevent severe forms of the disease, particularly in children. The BCG vaccine does not provide complete protection against TB, but it can help to lessen the severity of disease. It is important to note that BCG vaccine might not be effective in preventing TB in adults. Here note that in addition to BCG vaccine, maintaining a healthy lifestyle can prevent the TB infection. Now, is there a cure for TB? See, TB can be cured by taking appropriate antibiotics. The common antibiotics that are used in the treatment of TB are Isoni acid, Badaquiline, Rifampin, Pyracinamide and Ethambutol. So these are the preliminary related facts about TB. Now we shall see some steps taken by Indian government to combat tuberculosis. First we have the National Strategic Plan for Tuberculosis Elimination was launched in the year 2017. The goal of the plan is to reduce TB related death and also to eliminate TB from India by 2025. Then there is Nikshai Mitra initiative. Actually Nikshai Mitra is a portal for donors to provide various forms of support to those who are undergoing TB treatment. The donors through this portal can provide nutritional, diagnostic and vocational support. Anyone suffering from TB in India can register the details in this portal and ask for help. Then there is Pradhan Mantri TB Mug Bharat Abhiyan. This is an initiative of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Under this initiative, additional patient support is given by bringing in all stakeholders. The government also plans to use corporate social responsibility, that is CSR activities, to extend the support to patients. Then there is TB Harega Desh Jadega campaign. Its main aim is to increase the reach of TB care services in our country. Through this campaign, the government also aims to spread awareness about TB and encourage people with the TB symptoms to seek medical attention and remain adherent to the treatment. Government is also working on creating new TB vaccines. Vaccine Project Management 1002 and Mycobacterium Indicus Prani are two viable vaccine candidates. Finally, there is Nikshai Poshan Yojana. This scheme also comes under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. It is a nutrition support scheme. Under the scheme, government provides 500 rupees through direct benefit transfer 
to TB patients to help with their nutritional needs. So these are some of the steps taken by government to combat tuberculosis in India. So in this discussion, we have seen basics about tuberculosis disease and some important steps taken by Indian government to control tuberculosis. So this is all about this discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Take a look at this article from Sunday's newspaper. According to the article, ISRO has successfully completed its first test flight for Gaganyaan mission. See, the purpose of this test flight is to demonstrate ISRO's ability to protect astronauts in case of emergency. The test flight was named as Test Vehicle Abort Mission 1, that is TVD-1 flight. So currently, ISRO has successfully completed this test. So in this backdrop, let us revise about basics of Gaganyaan mission. The primary objective of Gaganyaan mission is to demonstrate India's capability to send humans into space, conduct scientific experiments and bring them back safely. So this mission contains three important components. First is crewed spacecraft. ISRO has developed a crewed spacecraft that is called Gaganyaan spacecraft. This spacecraft will carry two to three astronauts into space. The second component is launch vehicle. The Gaganyaan spacecraft will be launched into orbit using launch vehicle called GSLV Mark III. It is one of the most powerful launch vehicles of ISRO. Then training facilities. Indian astronauts are being trained in Russia as well as in India to prepare for the mission. This includes training for microgravity, handling the spacecraft and conducting experiments. Now if we look into the Gaganyaan spacecraft, we have three important modules. Orbital module, service module, crew module. First orbital module is a part of spacecraft where astronauts stay during most of the mission. It includes a living and working space for astronauts where they can eat, sleep and conduct experiments. Then there is service module. This is attached to the orbital module and has engines for propulsion, power generation and other support functions. The service module has solar panels to generate power and has storage for fuel. Then crew module. It is where astronauts are seated during launch and re-entry. It is designed to protect astronauts during launch and during re-entry of the mission. So these are the three important modules of Gaganyaan mission. Now we shall see some of the significance of the mission. Successful completion of Gaganyaan mission will make India the fourth country in the world to send humans to space. This is after United States, Russia and China. So this gives an international recognition to India's space program. Then the mission will enable Indian astronauts to conduct scientific experiments in space which can provide valuable insights into various scientific and medical fields. Then the mission showcases India's advancement in space technology and proving its position as a leading player in space industry. So these are some of the significance of the mission. In this discussion, we have seen the important components of Gaganyaan mission and the three important modules of Gaganyaan spacecraft and some of the significance of the mission. So this is all about this discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Now look at this news article. Hyderabad Municipal Corporation is experimenting a new technology called Geocell technology. This is to reduce soil erosion below the roads. So in this news article discussion, let us understand about Geocell technology. Geocell technology uses three-dimensional honeycomb-like structures to lay roads. This structure is made up of high-density polyethylene or polyester. The honeycomb-like structures are interconnected to create a grid-like structure. These cells are then filled with the soil, aggregate or other granular materials. This will provide stability and load distribution. Geocells are commonly used for soil stabilization, erosion control, slope protection and pavement reinforcement. Now let us see important benefits of geocell technology. Firstly, geocells are effective in controlling soil erosion on slopes and embankments. Secondly, they help in strengthening roads and pavements. Thirdly, geocell technology can be more cost effective than traditional construction methods because it minimizes excavation and reduces material usage. 
finally it is a sustainable solution that minimizes environmental disruption reduces natural resource consumption and it is eco friendly method so these are some of the points related to geo cell technology then there is another similar method for laying eco friendly roads that is steel slag technology this technology uses steel slag for laying roads here steel slag is the by product of steel production it is nothing but a waste from steel industries this steel slag has many advantages for laying roads firstly it is cost effective steel slag is often less expensive than natural aggregates like crushed stone or gravel so it is an economical choice for road construction secondly it has environmental benefits using steel slag reduces the need for quarrying and thereby it minimizes the environmental impact then it also has durability steel slag has excellent durability and can withstand heavy traffic loads and harsh weather conditions then it is also skid resistance steel slag provides good skid resistance enhancing the road safety steel slag is known for its durability and resistance to wear and tear and it is suitable for laying roads in heavy traffic areas so these are some of the benefits of using steel slag in laying roads by using these new technology to lay roads india aims to lead the way in sustainable road infrastructure development and thereby achieving the waste to wealth mission see the waste to wealth mission is one of the nine national missions under prime minister's science technology and innovation advisory council waste to wealth mission will assist the swachh bharat mission and smart cities project to create circular economic models and thereby creating waste to wealth models so in this discussion we have seen basics about geo cell technology and also some important points about steel slag technology so this is all about this discussion now let us move to the next topic look at this news article recently a high energy fast radio burst from a complex galaxy has been identified it has offered new insights into universe challenging the current models of frb emission researchers have localized the source of this particular frb so this is the crux of the news article in this discussion we shall know about what is fast radio burst fast radio burst or intense pulse of radio waves that originate from sources outside milky way galaxy frbs release energy in just a fraction of second equivalent to what sun emits in thousands of years so this makes them one of the most energetic event in the universe know that frb lasts only for milliseconds in the sky because of this it is difficult to detect and determine their position in the sky now what is the origin of fast radio bursts generally frb are spotted in various parts of universe so their origin is unknown and their appearance is highly unpredictable we generally know about frb by their defining properties the defining property of frb is their dispersion generally this frb produces a spectrum of radio waves know that when these waves travel through matter they disperse at higher radio frequencies by doing so they can be detected earlier at telescopes than those at lower frequencies now what is the use of this dispersion the dispersion of frb is used by researchers to learn about two important things firstly by measuring this dispersion scientists analyze about the matters that radio bursts have passed through by doing so we can be aware of missing matters of universe and intergalactic matter secondly by measuring dispersion astronomers can indirectly determine the distance between astronomical things to put it simply larger the dispersion more the material the frb have passed through so it means frb have traveled farther across the universe so the dispersion of frb helps to know about the matters in the universe and the distance between them now what is the significance of studying frb frb can detect ionized material between galaxies thereby providing insights into the ionized matter in universe even though the cause of frb remains uncertain by using their frequencies we can understand about the structure of universe so this is all about frb 
So FRB is just a radio waves that originate from unknown sources in distant part of the universe. So this is all about this discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Look at this news article. Recently, Supreme Court of India has asked the central government to restore the ecological health of Himalayan ecosystem. In replying to this, Union government has proposed a committee to suggest measures in order to restore the ecology of Himalayan region. So this is the crux of the article. In our discussion, we are going to see about the challenges faced by Himalayan ecosystem and the steps that are taken to conserve it. As usual, we will approach this topic with the mains answer writing come interactive approach. Now before getting into the discussion, let us look into the syllabus. In prelims, this topic comes under Indian Geography, Physical, Social, Economic Geography of India. And in mains, it comes under GS Paper 1. Under the topic of Important Geophysical Phenomena, Geographical Features and their Location Changes and Effects of Such Changes. So this is all about the syllabus. Now look at the question. The Indian Himalayan region is prone to multi-crisis in recent times. In the light of this statement, analyze the challenges to Himalayan ecosystem and discuss the steps that are taken to restore the Himalayan ecosystem. So in this question, the key words are analyze and discuss. The structure of the answer is very simple. In the first part of answer, we are going to write about challenges to Himalayan ecosystem and in the second part, we are going to write about the steps that are taken to protect Himalayan ecosystem. And in the end, we can suggest some measures to safeguard Himalayas as conclusion part. Now coming to the question. The statement in the question says that Indian Himalayan region is prone to multi-crisis in recent times. So in the introduction part, we can write about importance of Himalayan region. This is how we have to approach this question. Let us start with the introduction. The Indian Himalayan region is a section of Himalayas within India. They spread across 13 states or union territories and it extends between Indus and Brahmaputra river systems. It is home to many perennial rivers, thereby it contributes to food security and energy security of the country. In this way, you can give a simple introduction about Indian Himalayan region. Now coming to the body of the answer. See in the first part, we should write about challenges to Himalayan ecosystem. Now let us list out the important challenges. First is climate change and glacial melting. The increasing temperatures due to climate change resulted in melting and retreat of glaciers. It results in water scarcity and glacial lake outburst. For example, according to Center for Science and Environment, more than 8,800 glacial lakes in Himalayas are classified as dangerous. Next is tectonic activities in Himalayas. We know that Himalayas are young fold mountains and they are prone to tectonic activities. So it is a highly unstable and tectonically active region. This makes the region highly prone to natural disasters such as landslides, avalanches and earthquakes. According to ISRO's Landslide Atlas of India, all the 12 districts of Himachal Pradesh are prone to landslips. The next important challenges to Himalayan ecosystem is the ecologically insensitive development model. Building of large-scale infrastructure projects without taking into consideration of impact on environment has affected the ecology of Himalayan region. For example, the Chardam project and many hydropower projects in Himalayan states have affected the forest and topsoil of fragile Himalayas. The impact of these projects are seen in sinking of Joshimath region in recent news. Then another important challenge is unsustainable tourism. The Himalayan region is home to various religious and cultural spots. So these regions naturally attracts a large number of tourists. Unfortunately, this tourism is affecting the ecology of the Himalayan region. Then another important challenge is growth of invasive species. The growth of large number of invasive species in Himalayan natural ecosystem has disrupted the balance of ecosystem. For example, purple flowers, white clover, tumbleweed mustard or some of the invasive species in Himalayan ecosystem. So this is all about the challenges faced by Himalayan ecosystem. Now coming to the second part of the answer. 
that is we are going to discuss about the steps taken to restore the himalayan region the first important step is national mission on sustaining himalayan ecosystem it was launched in 2010 and it is a part of eight missions under national action plan on climate change it covers 11 states and two union territories that is himachal pradesh uttarakhand sikkim all northeastern states west bengal jammu and kashmir and ladakh this mission is a pan himalayan strategy covering the himalayan ecosystem next is secure himalaya project it is funded by global environment facility know that the project aims to promote sustainable management of forest in himalayan ecosystem then there is a mishra committee report of 1976 The findings of the committee are related to land subsidence in Joshimath region. It analyzed the problems and recommended placing restrictions on heavy construction work and hydropower projects. Implementing the committee's report will help to restore the Himalayan ecosystem. Now coming to the conclusion part. Here we can suggest our own measures to safeguard the Himalayan ecosystem. The infrastructure projects must reflect the local ecosystem while incorporating measures for seismic fragility sustainable hydropower projects must be designed and the dams must be reengineered in himalayan ecosystem appropriate mechanisms should be taken to balance the growth of tourism in a sustainable manner in addition to this we need an international collaboration to safeguard the himalayan ecosystem all the countries of himalayan region must come together for cooperation to monitor the risks in himalayan ecosystem they should work together to prevent any further construction that affects the fragile ecosystem of himalayan region so in this way we can suggest our own measures regarding the protection of himalayan ecosystem so this is all about the discussion here we have seen what are the important challenges to indian himalayan region what are the steps that are taken to protect the region and finally we have suggested some measures to protect the region so this is all about this discussion now let us move to the next topic look at this news article yesterday national investigation agency has arrested a 30 year old man in connection with sri lankan human trafficking case the news may not be important for us but we will revise about the basics of national investigation agency in this discussion See National Investigation Agency is a statutory body created under National Investigation Agency Act 2008. The agency was created in response to 2008 Mumbai terror attacks. It is to strengthen India's ability to combat terrorism and handle national security threats. The agency functions under Ministry of Home Affairs. The primary mandate of NIA is to investigate and combat terrorism and other organized crimes that have national or international importance. It has jurisdiction across entire country and can investigate cases related to terrorism, cyber crime, arms smuggling, human trafficking and etc. Remember NIA is headed by Director General who is a senior IPS officer. The agency has eight regional offices across india and it is headquartered at new delhi now coming to the powers of the agency nia has extensive powers including the ability to arrest and detain suspects conduct searches seize assets and gather evidence it can also prosecute cases in special nia courts nia can also collaborate with the law enforcement agencies of other countries to investigate cases of international importance This includes cases involving cross-border terrorism and extradition of suspects as provided under section 6 of NIA Act the state governments can refer the cases to central government for NIA investigation after assessing the details the central government can direct NIA to take over the case from state government apart from this NIA also has a cyber crime division responsible for investigating cyber related offenses including online radicalization and hacking the agency can arrest individuals who threaten national security this is done under unlawful activities prevention act that is uapa act so these are some of the powers of nia with this we conclude this discussion now we have come to the prelims practice question discussion look at the first question it is about geocell technology 
In which of the following areas geo cell technology is primarily used? As we know from the discussion, the correct answer is option D. Construction of roads and pavements. Now look at the second question. Consider the following statements regarding National Investigation Agency. It was established primarily to combat domestic cyber crimes and internet fraud. This statement is incorrect because it was created to investigate terrorism, transnational organized crime and other national security threats. Now look at the second statement. It can investigate terror cases across the country without having to get permission from the states. Yes, this statement is correct. Look at the third statement. Under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act 1967, NIA is allowed to detain individuals without filing formal charges. Yes, this statement is also correct. So the correct answer is option B, only two. Now look at the third question. Which of the following statements accurately describes the concept of microgravity as experienced by astronauts in Earth's orbit? Microgravity is absence of gravity resulting in complete weightlessness. This statement is incorrect because microgravity is not absence of gravity. Now look at the second statement. Microgravity is a state in which gravitational forces are significantly reduced but not entirely absent. Yes, this statement is correct. The third and fourth statement are also incorrect because microgravity is not concentrated in small area. It is just a reduced amount of gravity. It is also not experienced by astronauts on moon. So basically microgravity is a reduced amount of gravity which is experienced by astronauts in Earth's orbit. So the correct answer is option B. So this is the main question for you today. Interested aspirants can write the answer and post it in the comment section. With this we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to Shankara's YouTube channel. Thank you.